I'm Sabine. And I'm Stefan. And, and we're, we're the, the Youssefs. Growing up, one of my favorite movies was um, Alice in Wonderland. And I loved the idea of her shrinking down and living amongst the flowers. Now as an adult, I realize it's more so an appreciation to be able to slow down and look at things from a different perspective and appreciate nature. And when I started seeing the tiny house shows on TV, it was like, oh, that would be really cool. And I love traveling. So there was like a double cool thing. He was definitely not with it initially, and we went to Atlanta just to stay in one. And at the time, I was like, okay, he's 6'4". Well, he's not gonna be up in the loft, so let me find one that has a downstairs bedroom. And where does he end up? In the loft. <laughs> I was trying to isolate. So we have a huge house, right? And I created all these individual spaces so everyone can be in their comfort zone, right? But in our big house, we all just ended up congregating together. We have a big, huge L couch. I like to sit in this spot. She likes to be on, you know, just cuddling with me. And the kids like to be cuddling on her. So we're all just utilizing like a, a fraction of the couch. And it just seemed like every space in the house, we would all end up in the same room. So it, it felt like a waste of space at some point. So when we stayed in the tiny house, I said, well, let me see if I can get away for a little bit, let them have some space, see if I can really live in this space because the loft was definitely not appealing to me. So I kind of challenged myself to see if I could be comfortable in a different space and it was fine. We were living in Massachusetts during the pandemic is when we decided, let's do this. Meet TJ, AKA Tiny Journey, our tiny house. We're currently in Phoenix, Arizona, and we are living the tiny dream. We've been living in it for over a year, and it's a 38 foot long gooseneck that's eight and a half feet wide and 13 feet tall. We're currently parked in an RV park that's within the city limits. So we are close to movies, shopping, grocery stores, all the things that you need. This particular RV park has a pool, it has a hot tub, it has a clubhouse. Come on in, we'll show you around. As we get close to the tiny house, you'll notice that we have a little patch of grass. We are in Arizona where grass doesn't grow grass is a luxury so we added this turf area just so that we can kind of lounge out here and you'll notice this beautiful deck that I personally built. I found an example online and tweaked it to accommodate our French doors heading in. So the nice thing about the deck is that it actually breaks apart pretty easily for easy transport so if you'll notice this is not drilled in so it's the same thing for both the top step and the bottom. And then the three panels, we just collapse down and take it on our way with us. Let's go take a look inside. Welcome to our tiny house. The tiny house is 350 square feet without the lofts. When we were trying to decide on what we wanted our tiny house to look like, some things that we kept in mind were the fact that we homeschool our kids, so we needed to have a specific place to do that. But we also have Stefan, who works from home and does IT, so we needed a designated space for him that can also double as desk space for the rest of the family. We also wanted to create a space that was warm and welcoming and had enough for each member of the family to express themselves and be comfortable in their own spaces. Um, so we added a lot of plants, make sure Sabine was good. We, uh, we added tons of books and plenty of space for homeschooling so each kid had a little section so they can do what they need to do. Plenty of ceiling space, we needed that height as well. Starting in the back of the tiny house is the living room. So right when you enter, so we like to store our shoes here. This also doubles as a table or a chair. Over here is the seating arrangement. As you see, this is an L couch. L couch is mainly for me and my long legs. The rest of the family can handle with the rest of the couch. This also has storage underneath it, and it also leans back so that you can lay down and use it as a bed. 
We usually fit the whole family on the couch at once. Sometimes we watch movies or just have dinner here. Then a few steps forward, we're stepping into my office. Now this space also has some storage underneath the stairs that we use and my workspace. So this is my stand-up desk. It also goes up and down, so it's adjustable. And it has my humongous monitor for editing and I also double it um, so that half of the screen can use as TV or sometimes I use the other side for just my work. So if the kids are sitting next to me, I can do my thing and they can watch a little of their TV. Uh, the kids, sometimes they use it for schoolwork for the most part. The kids just use the whole house as their classroom. So any space is up for, for dibs. We designed this one specifically to kind of match our needs. Honest, for a kid, it's like, oh, we get a tree house <laughs> or we get our own playhouse. So they were completely stoked about it, especially visiting the, um, the different tiny houses when we were testing them out. They were very excited about it. And then when we were in the big house, we would like tape down the floor so that we could measure the spaces and see if we could um, comfortably settle the kids into the spaces. We ended up going with a company that had a floor plan that mm -hmm. best matched the specifics that we wanted in our own tiny house. Mm -hmm. So we settled on Mint Tiny Homes and this is their Canada Gooseneck model. Did December of 2020, we paid our deposit, we decided on our plan, we worked through all of the ins and outs of the fixtures, the, you know, everything. The specifics to our yeah, home, the customizations, outlets. where Stefan wanted his out outlets with the anticipation that we would be able to fly to Canada and see it during the build process. <sighs> the borders were still closed all the way to the point where the build was complete and we still hadn't seen our tiny house. We decided to have Mint Tiny Homes deliver our tiny house to our first location, which was in Central Valley, California and I secured my first nursing travel contract there. So we decided to sell our 2,500 square foot home, get rid of practically everything. We had a, what is it, a, a, a five by eight cargo trailer in our cars. And we take this cross country road trip from Massachusetts to Central Valley, California. 10 days. 10 days, yeah. Very aggressive. It was supposed to be 11, but it, our delivery was one day early. Some of the important things when designing our tiny house layout was having a dishwasher. As much as I like to clean around the house, dishes is not at the top of my list of things that I enjoy doing. So we did include a dishwasher. We also enjoy cooking with gas. So we have a three burner cooktop and an oven. As we were doing our research, we noticed a lot of tiny houses didn't have much counter space. So we wanted to have a balance between having enough space for everything else and having enough cooking space. So in our kitchen, we do have uh, ample counter space. And we also wanted to make sure that we had an adequate size fridge. So we have an apartment size fridge here. We did opt to uh, lift it up because we're both tall and put our snack drawer at the bottom so the both of us can reach the top and when we want to hide things from the kids we just put it at the top in the back. Another feature that was really important to us because of my love of plants was making sure we had an ample amount of natural light. So just in the living space alone and in the lofts we have nine windows. As we head forward in the tiny house we have the bathroom. The nurse in me is a borderline germaphobe. So as we tried out other tiny houses, I realized that when I sit on the toilet, my legs cannot touch the tub. They can't touch anything. I knew when designing the bathroom that I didn't want certain pieces to be too close together. So you'll see here our toilet. We did go back and forth with trying to decide between a composting toilet and a regular flushing toilet. And we didn't want to be limited. Certain cities don't actually allow the composting toilet. So we went ahead with a regular flushing toilet. We also wanted to make sure that the sink was high enough given our heights. So we went with the raised sink on the floating counter here.
Another thing that we knew, given that we are a family of four, that we did not want to compromise on is a washer and dryer. And we've heard so many mixed reviews on the washer dryer combo that we didn't want that steep learning curve. We wash clothes daily and sometimes multiple loads a day because it's four of us. So we went with the stackable washer dryer combo. And on this side, we have our shower. We went without a tub because our kid's a little bit older, so we don't necessarily need the tub. And we also do thoroughly enjoy sitting while we have a shower, that's our me time. So in the shower, we do have a seating area. And next to the shower, we have our linen closet, which we store all of our extra linens, our towels, our laundry goes in there. Now for a brief message from our sponsor, Lindo Dual Camera Video Doorbell. Are you a frequent online shopper? Do you live in a tiny house and don't like unannounced visitors? Either way, you'll appreciate a little extra front door security. Because let's face it, our furry friends are unreliable. The Lindo Dual Camera Video Doorbell has got your back. It offers an unparalleled mix of efficiency, ease of use, and competitive price. The dual camera design provides you with a super wide 190 degree field of view. The forward-facing camera focuses on humans, while the downward camera focuses on packages, making it easy to capture even the most clever porch pirates. See whoever comes to the door in crystal clear 2K video. You can talk to them too. Hey ladies, you get my bananas? You know it. DIY installation is easy and the app gives you step-by-step -step instructions. Remove blind spots with the Lindo Dual Camera Video Doorbell today and save $30 off with our code. See the link in the description. On our way to the very front of the tiny house is the bedroom. And to get there, we do have steps with storage. So this is our bedroom, which we were so happy about the results because not only do we have plenty of ceiling height but we also have enough room for our queen size bed that we actually rotate so we can have it long ways and have two little foldable nightstands on the side or we like it this way because the family can kind of sit all together as a day bed and we can watch tv our television it does tuck away so when it's not in use you don't have to see it and then when we get ready to use it we can pull it down just like any new house, you have to get everything, including the blinds. So we wanted to make sure that we took care to decide what kind of blinds we wanted. And as much light as we want in our bedroom, we also want to be able to sleep. So we got these custom blinds that um, have the shade here that allows air in so we can open the windows. It give us, gives us the privacy, but it also allows good airflow. And then at night, we're able to have the blackout portion so we sleep in as late as the kids will allow us. Behind me is my closet which I customized here. Initially when we bought it it came as a blank slate with just the rod. I added the top shelf here myself, stained the piece of wood that's up there so that I could have some additional storage up there. I also added a little desk here so that I can have my personal space to do computer work. And finally, I added the drawers so that I can put all of my drawer items and then our tankless hot water heater down there, but then there's space for storage. So many people ask, you know, well, what did you do when you downsize with like your memorabilia, things that you really didn't want to get rid of? It's down there. There's plenty of space for it. So we played with the idea prior to the pandemic forcing us to homeschool. Felt really empowered at that point that we could do it and just kind of felt like, well, this is a sign from God that we can do it. It's been a learning curve. Them being young allows me to understand the curriculum that I'm actually teaching them. So We're going back to school with them. <laughs> All the stuff that didn't stick, we're getting a second chance. Yeah. We go on way more field trips than I remember going on when I was in grade school. And there are a lot of impromptu field trips. They don't have to necessarily be just the learning. It's just let's get outside. Let's mm -hmm. explore and be appreciative of God's creation. Since 
deciding to go tiny before we got to the tiny house we did a cross-country road trip they have seen so many national parks they have been <laughs> to hawaii they've been to san francisco they've been way more places than we had at their age so that's the really great thing and whenever we go to a new state we make it a point to include that in their curriculum and it was great before moving here to arizona I think we were in Target and Simeon stops and he goes, mom, the Arizona flag. And he points at something and I'm like, yes, that one stuck. So I think it builds resilience too. So we have a five year plan, five years, five states. That means for the kids, they're kind of like military kids in the sense that you're moving a lot. But for them, they're able to make friends quickly and deal with like long distance friendships. So I think it builds resilience. And then they learn people from different backgrounds and they get to build those relationships. When we grew up, we were we grew up in a classroom setting, and most of the time, all you knew was those four walls. Um, they're in a setting where they're learning stuff, and they're actually seeing it. So, whether we're learning about geography today or math, it's a lot more hands-on, and you, we get to practice things outside of the classroom that kind of relate to real life or why you might want to retain this knowledge. Mm -hmm. So just above us here, we have our secondary loft. In that loft, we have our office. We use it as our homeschool space. We also have a small library, just additional hangout space for the kids. So to get up to that loft, we use our ladder that we store just here behind the fridge. The kids love playing up there. Obviously, it's where all of their toys are, so they go hang out up there. In the loft, while we're doing our homeschooling, the kids have lap desks that they use. They have foam and backed chairs that they can sit in up there in a nice soft rug. They have the library that they can easily access their books. We have a printer up there and other different manipulatives and art supplies and all of their school supplies are mostly up there. Action. Heading up the stairs is the kids' loft, which Stefan will give you a tour of. A few more of these steps are used for storage, but come on up. So this is Sana's area where she has a nice little bed. She has a scenic view and she also has all her little trinkets and dolls and toys. A nice little clock here just so that she can tell the time. But this is where she relaxes. And on the other side is Simeon's space where he sleeps and has a lot of his toys with a few decals that capture their personality. So Sana has a lot of butterflies and a little fairy here. Meanwhile, Simeon has mountains and bears and dinosaurs. Sometimes when they just want to get away from each other, they come up here while one's in the classroom, but they really like to read. And sometimes before bedtime, they'll listen to stories and play down in that front area where they can kind of see each other and play around with each other's toys. And at the foot of their bed, they have a few cubbies that store their clothes and their toys. We paid 120,000 for the tiny house. That included all of our upgrades and it also included our delivery. So a fraction of our huge, massive house. Mm. We don't have a mortgage. We don't even have, like, we don't even have a tiny house bill. So when we sold our big house, that paid for the tiny house. We were able to cut all of our expenses down to a fraction of what paying before. Financially speaking, living in a tiny house is way more feasible than I expected. And the difference is so significant that that's what actually sold me. When we're talking about the bills and just keeping the lights on, it was becoming something that I dreaded. Seeing my paycheck and then not seeing it go and not seeing it and <laughs> within you know a matter of minutes was um, pretty depressing. So now we get to be way more irresponsible with our money. And now we get to travel, we get to see family more often, like she said. So the kids get to enjoy a lot more family time. So it's very interesting. We had to move away to learn that we can actually spend more time together. Right. We talk about the rat race, everybody being in the rat race. You get into debt to earn this degree, then you go to work to pay back that debt, and you spend so much time away from family. Like, living in a tiny house has completely turned that around. I work my three days a week. I can take time off of work in between my contracts. He's able to work from home, and we're both, even with our schedules, able to homeschool the kids, able to travel. It's like enriched our lives so much 
since downsizing. And in terms of like the day-to-day -day living, it really hasn't changed that much. We might bump into each other a little bit more. After the first month uh, that we lived in the tiny house, I remember sitting looking around like, huh, what next? Like, what else should I feel after living in this? And really your, your, your life in terms of your home stuff like you clean, you cook, you all of that doesn't change that much. Your square footage changes. So it's easier and right. people who don't usually clean up can participate knowing that it's not such a daunting task. Yeah. watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Instagram for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.